Welcome to my video of making a steam chamber for steam bending wood. About uh, two and a half years ago I took a course with Michael Fortune up at the uh, Center for Furniture Craftsmanship in Maine on the subject of uh, chair making, but really uh, what I wanted to learn was steam bending from somebody who's a master. Uh, so I uh, took the course and then started collecting materials and now two and a half years later I'm finally ready to to put them together. Uh, making the rig is, is fairly simple. Uh, there are a couple things you'll need. You need a source of heat to make steam. So I've got a burner here that we use down here by Chesapeake Bay to cook crabs. I've got a five gallon uh, tank that can hold water. Goes on top of the burner. A galvanized pipe set up that I'm going to uh, put between the tank and the steam bending box. A piece of uh, pressure treated plywood. This is a scrap that I had. It's uh, enough here to make a 8 inch square by 4 foot long box with a door on each end. The doors will be hinged so that uh, I can you know, move wood in and out of either end or if I need to make a longer box I can open the doors and attach other box sections to the end and uh, make a real long box. Uh, some dowels to suspend the wood above the bottom of the box, a little bit of uh, exterior construction adhesive for when I'm assembling the box, and of course uh, my plans for the setup that I've made on my design cat. Here you can see the drawing of the steam box with the uh, little block of wood on the front to let the condensate flow back into the chamber, uh, you know, into the boiler. Got the dowels to hold the wood off the uh, bottom, and there's a little hole top and side for a thermometer to measure the temperature. Okay, this is my uh, my boiler. It's a kerosene can, cleaned out really well, and uh, paid three dollars for it. Had two gallons of kerosene in it when I bought it. Thought that was a good deal. I'm going to go ahead and make this so I can slip this pipe into the can as a slip fit. Now this will be attached to the box so when I'm ready to use the box I just lift up the end of the box, slide the can underneath, slip that in, nice tight fit. So because it's steel I don't have a steel cutter to do a round hole so I'm going to have to make a series of eighth inch holes and so I'm just going to go ahead and make little center punch marks that I can then drill into a little filing and hopefully this will fit. And now I'll just use my multi-master saw with a metal blade just to cut through all the places where between the holes. Okay, I've cut four sides for the box. Each of these is uh, seven and three eighths, and uh, the way I'm going to put them together, I should end up with uh, a total of a uh, of an eight-inch box and uh, on the outside. Uh, I've drilled holes every six inches along the length. I've got some construction adhesive. Uh, this uh, wood is uh, it's, it's pretty bad actually. A lot of voids and so forth. So instead of doing the uh, tongue and groove that I would planned on doing to assemble this, I'm just going to do flat butt joints with the construction adhesive and a lot of screws. i got brass screws that will withstand the moisture. And I'll just go ahead and Got this clamp to the bench because uh, this plywood is pretty warped. Once it's all screwed together, I'm sure it'll have the structural strength it needs. Okay, 
guys, and now the box is glued up, and uh, now I'm going to cut an inch and a half hole for the steam pipe. I'm cutting it down near one end so that the condensate can drain back to it. Okay, so the hole's cut. All we got to do now is screw the flange on there, and... Get nice flow up into the into the uh, the box. So here in the in the back of the box, I've made just a little dam out of some of the scrap plywood that I cut off of this to to make it, and it will help direct condensate into the pipe that goes back down into the can. And now I'll drill half inch holes for dowels to go across to hold the, uh, the wood while it's drying. I spaced the holes ten and a half inches apart so that they adequately support the wood and the hole ends up being about an inch or so off of the uh, off of the bottom so steam can flow underneath and the wood will all stay up in this top part okay I've got the box done this is the front end with the door I got a little flap up here with a hole for steam to escape I have put some silicon around here to form like a little gasket not looking for a tight seal or anything, but if I want the steam to kind of stay in the box, I can close the lid. Same thing with the door, where the door didn't fit well, I, I put a little silicon. I got a couple screws here. I can put some rubber band, hold the door relatively shut. You can see where the dowels go through to hold the wood up. Here's the back end. Got the rubber bands on the back end already installed it's holding that door shut there's my can with my little pipe all I'm going to do is lift up the back of the box slip the, slip the can under there and let the pipe go on down the hole I got the can about halfway filled with water right now for a little test run there's my burner and my propane so let's get started is raised up a little on the front so condensate will flow on back down into the pipe and back into the can to be turned into steam again. And now the long process of watching the pot boil. I've had the flame going for about five minutes or so. Got a fire extinguisher handy. Got some heavy gloves for when the steam comes. And I've got a test board that I'll put in there to uh, heat up and uh, see how it heats up. I also drilled holes in the top and the side where I can put a thermometer and I can measure the temperature near the outlet where, where it would be the coolest. Twenty minutes into heating, I'm starting to get a little steam coming out of the hole. Not enough to speak of, but at least you can see it. One other thing I po failed to point out, I leave the cap on the can very, very loose so it's another way for pressure to escape if necessary. I can qu quickly just flick it off. Now we're 25 minutes into heating and the steam's starting to come out pretty good. We're up to 182 degrees in my thermometer and you want some steam to leak out because that gets the steam flowing through the box to heat up the whole box. If you don't have any steam leaking out then you're going to have cold spots, so we want the whole thing to be heated. I'm going to go ahead and put my test board in. I'm up to about 208 degrees or so. This is uh, solar kiln dried, so it might not bend that good, but at least it gives me some feel for... Ooh, steams up my glasses for how this works.
Okay, well my test piece has been in here for an hour. Uh, I've got 212 degrees on the bottom of my box. Uh, you should be steaming for an hour for every inch of thickness and my piece is about an inch thick. So we're going to go ahead and quickly take this out, bring it in, put it around my form and see if it bends. Well, it seems as though my piece of solar kiln dried uh, red oak bent around the form. I'll bring the camera in there and show it to you. Now, clearly this is no serious steam bending, but as an experiment to see if the box works, I'd say it's a success. It seemed to bend around my form with no problem, and that's uh, solar kiln dried. Uh, I'm, I've Typically the, the kiln dried doesn't bend as good as the air dried, but this seemed to do this, you know, shallow radius bend fairly nicely. So I consider the, the uh, steam box a success.